Janet with Try It Like It Created, and today I am opening up this new mixed media journal from Graphics, and um, the Designer Craft Connection is doing a blog hop, being sponsored by Graphics, and this is the product they sent me um, to use for the hop. So let's open it up and see what we have here to use. All right, so once we open it up, we can see here we've got a variety of different materials. So we've got some clear Duralar. We have some matte Duralar. We have it's another piece of matte. Um, looks like another piece of clear, although it's not quite as thick. Then... We've got some wet media Duralar. Oh, that was the clear. And then we've got opaque white Duraclear. We have natural chipboard for the, I'm assuming, the front and the back of the binder. And then we also have this black Duralar. And all of this, and you can buy extra insets or inserts extra pages for your journal. Um, I'm going to put the chipboard on the front and the back and then you have these discs that hold it together. So with the disc system you can take it apart, you can work on it, and then put it back together again. So if you want to remove a page, do a little work, and then stick it back into your journal. Um, this is going to be so fun to work with and I think um, my project for this might just be um, starting with working on the covers. Okay, so to put the um, binding onto the journal, I have I started by trying to put it all together at once, just a big stack and push these in, and it did not want to work at all. So I'm gonna suggest that you do um, one, the backing piece first, and then maybe a few of the plastic sheets um, they're more giving than the chipboard and you can see here I'm putting them in here I would also recommend keeping the packaging together with it so that you know which sheet is which and what kind of material works on it because I have a variety of different pieces here so I'm just placing this all together. I have removed out this wet media sheet. You can see it reflecting. It's clear. Um, and so I would say the chipboard is probably the harder of the pieces to put on. And you probably don't want to do it on and off too much because you don't want to break that chipboard down. So there. Our journal is put together. You can see that it opens up and you can lay it flat and work on it if you want um, or you can close it up and just take a sheet out and work which is what we're going to do. So here is the um, listing of what's in here and I'm going to keep this together until I finish my journal. Since it said it worked with wet medium, I thought, hey, I'll work with my jelly plate. So I'm going to start out with just some alcohol ink. Since it's transparent, we'll just put some down and kind of see how that works first. And then we'll build some up from there. So I've got my ink on. I'm going to roll this out on here. Just to get some nice color. I think that'll work. I'm gonna roll that off. And then because it dries so quickly to pick it up, I'm gonna put some white paint over it. And we may need a little bit more paint here because it's not spreading enough, but we definitely don't want a lot. So let me just put another little dab. Okay. 
really nice thin coat of white. Pull that off to the side. Then I'm going to take a piece and my wet medium piece and put it on there and see how it goes. As I can see, I have some air bubbles, so I'm going to try to rub those out. Where I go to pick up. Okay, so yeah, there's our first layer. Not bad. All right, so then I thought we would bring in some stencils, and I just grabbed some, um, and I thought um, maybe floral. So let's see what happens here, and then I was going to use um, some. Distressed Oxide. Let me get my colors and I'll be right. So I'm just starting out here with some sponge sugar and I'm just going to stamp directly over my stencil and then try to roll that in some. And then move it over and maybe do another one over here. Let's go with something a little bit darker. All right, and so with this, I am just building up texture at the moment. So we have these two flower pieces. Once again, we're gonna go over it with some white. trying to keep track. I know it's clear, but we want to try to keep track of which side has the color and which side doesn't. So we'll pick that up. It doesn't look like we got much of the flower, but we are building up some. So I'm going to move my jelly plate off to the side. And let's just see what happens if we apply the ink right onto it. Let's see. We could even use a little cosmetic sponge or brush here. That down. So yeah, that's working. So far, seems to be doing pretty well with the different mediums. Put that little bit of flower off to the side here. Whoops! I'll hold it down. Let's go for another one up here. broken china color. Hopefully it's not too dark. To kind of brush it lightly in here. See how that looks. Okay. We'll do some down here at the bottom. Up here. Alright, so 
So we're starting to build up some textures here. It's looking good. I think the next thing we could do, let's see, is maybe do some stamping. So let me grab a stamp. All right, so for this one, I'm going to use Victorian Velvet and maybe some chip sapphire. So I brought in a floral stamp, and I'm just going to ink that up with my Distressed Oxide and then just randomly stamp on here and see. Wow, that's looking really pretty. Oh, I love the detail in the stamp. a little bit and then we'll bring in the blue I like working on scrap paper because I can clean off right as I'm working and then um, I can also stamp and kind of see what it's gonna look like on there and if it's too dark I don't think it is so let's go in and add this So we are building up our textures here. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is try some uh, decoupage on top of this. And I don't know, I might smear it, I might ruin it, but we'll give it a go. So I have a one layer piece of napkin here and I'm gonna go on top of the napkin and hope that maybe I could get it to bleed through a little I don't know let's put a little on the back of the napkin I know it's gonna break down the napkin some Decoupage is going to smear. Alright, so I'm going to try to be gentle here. And not go over too much because you can see here, I don't know if you can see, it's taking the ink off with it. So, um, let's see. What would that look like if we decoupaged on the back? That actually might work better. So let me, since I've decoupaged, I need to bring in a plastic surface here. So we're going to use our plastic sheet from there. And let's um, decoupage onto the back. is wanting to come and play with us. So. Once this dries, I will peel off the excess napkin from the edges. And then we'll see what else we can do with this surface. So the last thing I'm going to do to this page is off camera I sprayed it 
with a little bit of um, clear sealant because things were smearing on me. And then I am just going to glue this piece of ephemera down to the page. And um, what I have here, it was white, and I just used a little bit of watercolor um, to tone it down to a more pink color that blends in a little bit better. And I'm just gonna place that right here. And then I'm gonna let the whole page dry. Um, I just love the um, translucent look of the tissue paper from both sides. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about is that, you know, we glued this onto the back and this onto the back and this onto the front. And so when you turn it over, we have another image here that looks different than the front side. Um, and I just love that interactive of both sides of the piece of film.